You have to little by little let go more and more, give them more responsibility so that when they're out there in the world, they're ready to take some responsibility. If you just shelter them so much and don't let them ever be exposed to any kind of danger or harm, you are actually hurting them by doing that. You have to give them a little more rope all the time. Somebody will say, well, you give them a little, no, a little more rope all the time, maybe they'll hang themselves if you're not careful. Well, I know that's an expression people believe is you give a person enough rope, they'll hang themselves. So, you, you know, and that can happen to a child, too. In other words, they can, they can be, um, you know, they, they can be given too much responsibility too early. So, fathers are to train their children to, to gently lead them along, not being overbearing. Harshness causes bitterness and resentment. So it requires a re mutual respect and cooperation and, and not provoking them to wrath or, as the King James Version says, or exasperating them. Do you know what it is to be exasperated? What does it mean to be exasperated? I guess we use other expressions we say with just that wit's end. I don't know what to do. Do you ever get that way with your children where you just don't know what to do? Do you think your parents ever get, your children ever get that way with you, though? <laughs> children can get that way with their parents, too. They can get to the point where they don't know what to do, where they're just exasperated. Where they, and so the Bible says, don't provoke them to wrath. So there's a lot, fine line there between making them obey and making them subject to your authority and not making it so difficult that you provoke them to wrath or exasperate them with this. The last point is this, there must be mutual submission and respect for one another in the family. Verse 21, it says, submit to one another out of love for Christ. Submit to one another. And I think you have to come back to that because some people emphasize so much, wives submit to your husbands and, and the husband is the leader of the home and to the point where the husband where it's, I've seen families where, where the husband just took this so literally and so kind of out of context is to say, I'm the boss and whatever I say everybody else has to do and I'm going to tell everybody what they have to do around this household. And you may take that approach, but it won't work as well. So this verse immediately precedes the instruction about wives submitting to their husbands. Do you notice that? Usually when people preach on this passage, they leave that out and start with the next verse. They start in verse 22 and read that and then preach this sermon. But if you start with verse 21, then it puts it all together in a different context so that the submission to one another is in addition to the command about wives submitting to their husbands and husbands uh, loving your wives because it's all in the context of of what Christ did for us, that Christ died on the cross for us, that he, that he had a sacrificial love for us. So mutual submission is what's required, and mutual submission will solve many conflicts in family relationships. It's just a simple thing like, where are we going to go eat, or what are we going to have for supper? If you're going to go out, where are we going to go eat? Who decides that? Do you take a vote? Do you talk about it? Do you take a vote and have whatever, however the vote comes out, you go that way? Um, <laughs> the, but how do you make decisions like that? Now, the, the husband should just say, well, I'm the leader of the household, so I, just, I decide these kinds of things. But I don't suppose you probably do it that way, do you? I mean, you, you work it on it together, right? Decide what you're going to do. But that's just a simple little thing. But there are all kinds of things in life that require mutual submission. And mutual submission solves a lot of problems. When you work together on things. When, you, when you're having problems in the family and you say, we're going to have a, we're going to have a, uh, a meeting. We're going to sit down and talk about this. And, and we're all going to discuss it and talk about it. And where children actually have an opportunity to have input. Should children have an opportunity to input about things around the house and how they're going to be? And decide about discipline, too? <laughs> well, I know. When I was growing up, my mother told me to go outside and get a, get a stick to give her, give my, so she could give me a, a, a licking with it. So I'd get the littlest one I could, of course, uh, and, and one that would break. 
I didn't give you, you a little one isn't necessarily good. You can get a little one that's really tough, and that'll hurt worse than, a, than, than another kind. But uh, she should have gone and got it, you know, if she wanted, uh, wanted the right kind. But I wasn't going to get something that was going to hurt. If she sent me to get the weapon, it's not going to be something that's going to hurt. If you can choose your own weapon that's going to be used against you, what would you choose? Well, you can imagine a child is not going to choose the thing that's going to be hurt the most. But you, but you see, when we work together as a family on things, then it becomes much easier. Most of the problems that arise in the family are because of, the, of leadership involve an abuse of power or a lack of respect for authority. And, and all these things are addressed in this passage of Scripture. So God's design for the family is clear in this, in this Scripture and in, throughout the Bible. He gives instructions to husbands. He gives instructions to wives. He gives instructions to parents. He gives instructions to children. He, talks about, he tells us about mutual submission. And he tells us what our roles are to be. And if we, if we take our assigned roles, and if we love the Lord, and we love our family, then things work a lot better. The psychologists in our world have given a lot of bad advice to people across the years. And they've changed some of their advice too late to help some families. You know, I remember a, a young couple when I was in Macon years ago. They were about to have a, 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 their first baby. And this man said to me, he said, my wife and I have, have, have talked about this and we decided we're not going to say no to our child. Well, you know, that I guess uh, philosophically and all, that sounds like, well, he's going to just be positive parents. Well, that's nice, be positive parents. But no is a word in the English language, and it's one that's needed. So you, you can't simply say we're never going to say no to our child. There's sometimes when you need to say no. No, don't run out in the road. There's a car coming. And it's best for the child. And it's best for you too, because you don't want your child to be run over. So sometimes no is a good word. But God's design for the family is clear in the Bible. One man, one woman, not two men or two women, one man, one woman. Does everybody agree with that? Amen. United for life. Rearing children who respect one another as well as those outside the family unit and who live to make a real contribution to our world by making it a better place to live. Yes. Loving one another, caring about one another. That's God's design for the family. There's a, a beautiful song in our hymnal, we hardly ever sing it, but it, it is entitled, I Would Be True. And I want us to sing it as we close the service this morning.